Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome back to another sim racing guide. In this video I want to get under the skin of what it takes to go fast in front wheel drive touring cars. This class of cars is very popular here in the UK. BTCC has a long and storied history and the license for a new sim based on the series has just been picked up by Motorsport Games. Meanwhile the WTCR is a global series with multiple manufacturers on the grid and is a big part of what makes Race Room unique. Indeed, Raceroom arguably has the best range of modern and historic touring cars you can find in any racing sim, period. And while there's no doubt that these cars provide close racing and epic battles on track, they can be really tricky to get behind the wheel of, particularly if you're used to high downforce single seaters or rear wheel drive GT cars. In many ways, it can be like learning to drive all over again. So to help us do this, I'm really delighted to be joined in this video by Dennis Sherps, who many of you in the Raceroom community will know as being really very quick in the TCR class, as well as many others of course. Now he's currently running a GT4 league for KCG Racing, with a big race coming up at the Nordschleife on the 16th of September. If you're interested in joining the grid, there's details in the description to this video. But today, Dennis is going to help take us through the three big things you must do to race competitively in modern front wheel drive touring cars. And then to help illustrate some of those points, we'll do a bit of joint analysis on a lap of mine and then a lap of his around the Hungaro ring. Which is going to be quite humiliating for me, so stick around for that. I began by asking Dennis to talk us through what makes front wheel drive touring cars so different to other classes. Yeah, so... TCR or front wheel drive in general are a bit of an outlier when it comes to racing cars since most racing cars are real wheel like single seaters, like GD cars. Uh, in TC everything is done through the front tires. Throttling, braking and of course turning obviously. Uh, this has a big impact on the feeling on, and the handling of the car. There will be a lot of front lock and there will be even more understeer. Uh, the racing those cars is great, just due to the fact that a bit of touchy-touchy doesn't unsettle the car massively, like in other cars, and it's kind of expected. A little bit of elbows out here and there. Uh, you can easily go wheel-to-wheel -wheel through big complex of corners without crashing into each other most of the time. So, I mean, why, why do you think then that so many people can kind of struggle to adapt or get used to driving these cars? If you're very new to sim racing or racing in general, I think front wheel cars teach you a lot about it, about the basics, and it's a brilliant type to start out your career. Uh, if you're a veteran of F1 games or GT cars, uh, you might struggle just because you completely have to rewire your brain and your habits. Understeer is a lot more of putting for drivers than oversteer. If, you, if your car starts to understeer, you're going to have a really hard time to correct that. Uh, if you don't anticipate it. So pushing harder actually makes you slow in those cars and that's a bit off-putting for racing drivers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so if I was to put you on the spot then, Dennis, given those challenges, what, what would you say are the sort of three things for those coming either sort of new into modern TCR cars or for those who race it perhaps are struggling for pace? What, what should those people kind of really focus on in order to get quicker? Well, the classic slow in, fast out, rather break a bit earlier than later. Uh, second, don't fully break and turn at the same time. You're just going to steer, understeer off in the distance. So you have to release the brakes progressively before you start turning in. Otherwise, you get a massive amount of understeer. And third, you have to try to make the car oversteer to correct that understeer in medium and high speed corners, for example. And if you're oversteering, you can just throttle it out straight um, and so a bit of oversteer into the corner and then throttling it out and maybe even a bit of constant throttling throughout the corner helps doing this a lot. So to put some of what Dennis was talking about to the test, we sat down and each did a lap of the Hungaro ring in the WTCR 2019 Alfa Romeo to compare and contrast our driving styles and highlight important areas where Dennis is gaining speed that I can perhaps work on in the future. Before we do that though, if you're finding this video enjoyable and helpful, do remember to hit the like button and get subscribed to the channel. There's loads more online sim racing and guides to come that you won't want to miss. First up, let's check out my lap. 
Right Dennis, so this is my attempt around the Hungaro ring, coming around onto the start finish straight uh, and hopefully you're going to be able to help me critique it a little bit and, and, and sort of identify areas where I might be losing a bit of time and, and could be going a bit faster uh, and talk me through some of the technique. So we're coming down uh, into the first corner, thinking about the breaking point around 120 metre point, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Uh, what I saw is that you're not using, using the full braking potential of the cars initially, you hesitated to go full on the brakes. And that's where you lose out a tiny bit of yeah same for that corner as well that's where you lose a bit of uh time coming into the corner you, you can go on the under the brakes without fearing to lock up instantly but you have to release them quite early aggressively that tricky left hand here is difficult uh yeah, same same here you're not using full braking potential and you're a bit delayed on the throttle i guess those two things are linked right because I'm not slowing the car down enough, I can't get on the gas again early enough. Yeah, exactly. Slow in fast out. Uh, yeah. Same again here, I'm not using full brake potential, but the corner itself was pretty good. That left hander here is tricky. Using a bit of mid corner throttle, that's pretty good. That's what you want to see. Same here. That left hander is flat here. Keep it tight to the inside for that one. This one is also super tricky. I think you managed it quite okay, maybe a bit late on the throttle once again. Yeah, and again you see there's a bit of black above the red left, where you could use a bit more braking on the initial part. And that's potentially where you lose out a bit of time and maybe not really oversteering the car on fast corners that much, because you're probably not really used to it. It's going a bit too wide on entry there. Yeah. And Other than that, it's not a bad lap. What was it? A 153.5? That's not too bad. That's right, yeah, one, 153.5. So I guess just listening to you there talking through the lap, it's it's all about really being a bit bolder on the brakes, uh, which would then allow me potentially to kind of get on the throttle earlier, out of the corner, and carry more speed as a result. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, don't be too shy on the brake pedal in, in the initially. They don't, lock, they don't lock up instantly, so... You can go full brakes and then release them. That's better than not going full brakes and then kind of be in the middle all the time. That's where you lose out a lot of uh, entry speed. Good stuff. Well, let's now take a little bit look at, uh, of a look at your lap and see perhaps where I could be going quicker and, and, and how it's really done. Yeah, putting your braking marker 120 board, hard on the brakes, full brake and then releasing it progressively then turning quite early on the gas tiny bit of gas and then throttling it out as soon as you can you really that's stamped on the uh, brake pedal there much harder than yeah. i did yeah, that that's what you can do in those cars but if you overdo it you just lock up so you have to quite learn it a bit it was a bit wide down on the apex not really hitting the apex mm, this left hander here coming up is the most tricky part in my opinion you can see how early I'm in on the gas compared to your lap and here you can see that I'm inducing some oversteer with my throttle. Full brakes, releasing and then as early as possible on the throttle. Also you're trying to get the car rotate with oversteer throttle bit of grass on the apex, not too bad in race room. I didn't hit the apex there, so I lost out a few tenths, one or two. That's where I can improve. Hard on the brakes again, using the brakes early on the throttle, getting the car around. Bit progressive on the throttle here, do not get a lot of oversteer and then keep it tight to the apex, hug it like your favorite grandma early on the throttle as soon as you can. And that's a lap of Fungal Ring. It was a 152.4 something. So just, just, just over a second uh, quicker then, and you've got another couple of tenths in your pocket. Yep. I've never driven the car, but I feel like it's a brilliant car to start out in TCR. It's really easy to drive. Yeah, so this is the Alfa Romeo, yeah? The 2019 TCR? 
Yes. Thinking about the track that we've just done those laps on and the Hungaro ring, it, it feels to me, I mean, it's such a technical track. Like, if you can drive TCR moderately quickly here, then you, you're probably good to drive them anywhere, right? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant track to learn TCR because it basically has every kind of corner. It has tight corner, tight hairpins, fast, mid-speed corners and a chicane. So it's basically all what you need. And if you can manage to get in the low mid-52s here, that would have been enough to qualify you for the eSports TCR stuff. Wow. So, so not actually yeah. that far away. I mean, a second's quite a lot of lap time to find, mind. But, you know, maybe something to aim for in the future. Yeah, maybe you can use some of those tricks you just learned and get quicker. So, there you go. Slow in, fast out, hard on the brakes early and progressively release them through the corner and try and get the car to oversteer through medium to high speed corners. That's the advice of Dennis Sherps and you can see there very visibly that it's the key to him getting more lap time out of the TCR at the Hungaro ring. Clearly there's a bunch of work I'm going to need to do if I'm ever going to get close uh, to the kind of times that Dennis uh, is setting in these cars. Let's remember he just hopped in uh, to a, a TCR that he'd never driven before uh, in order to put that lap down. But hopefully you've all found the video helpful and it encourages you to stick with these cars if you've previously struggled with them. Even at my rather average skill level, they're a blast to drive. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, leave a like, get subscribed to the channel and I will see you next time.